let me say that I, I heard what uh, uh, what some of the previous speakers said, and you know, historically, I've been very confident in the FDA. But now that Trump is president, um, I still think there's a real possibility that he will pressure uh, the FDA to lower the standards, either by maybe putting out new guidelines that say that they don't have the standards don't have to be as good. I think right now they say the vaccine has to be 50 percent effective. But let's say um, let, let me give you a, a scenario where the FDA changes its guidance and says, oh, it only has to be 20 percent effective or 10 percent effective or. Uh, they keep to the guidance, but you know that yours is only 10 or 20 percent effective and they approve it anyway, saying, well, uh, you know, it meets the standards, even though you don't. I guess I'm trying to rely on you as the manufacturers to uh, kind of assume that the FDA will not meet the high standards, either by changing the standards or by uh, saying it's OK when you know it isn't. What, do you, what can you do in those circumstances? I mean, I want to make sure that. That, that you will guard against any pressure that comes from the FDA either to lower its standards or to, uh, or to approve something that you know doesn't meet the standards. Um, how, how can we, uh, what would you do as manufacturers to help us out in that regard uh, on the assumption that we can't trust the S uh, FDA the way you sort of assume? And let me start with, um, with um, uh, I guess we could start with uh, Dr. Pangloss. I know that's difficult to answer, but I want you to kind of assume uh, what unfortunately shouldn't happen, which is you know that the FDA is approving the drug, even though it's only 10 or 20 percent effective. Will you tell us that? Do you feel an obligation to tell us that and give us that information? We'll start with Dr. Pangelos. Thank you very much for, again, a, a very important question. What I would say, is, first of all, all of our interactions with the regulators have given us no evidence that they're lowering the standards or thinking about lowering their standards. Um, secondly, as a company, we will always think about safety and efficacy first and foremost and making sure that we have an effective medicine. We would not be trying to launch a medicine that is not effective. But so Dr. Pangelis, what I would ask is that regardless of what the FDA so says or does, that we could have some sort of assurance from you and others that you would tell us the truth about the effectiveness of the vaccine. Okay. That they are all, now all of, absolutely so all of our data in pivotal studies would be published as is true of all of the studies that we run in, in 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 pivotal trials but also remember this is going to be a vaccine that is going to be used globally and so every regulatory authority is going to have a view on the efficacy and safety of our vaccine not just all right, the that's US. helpful now let me ask dr duoji the same thing assuming that you know you find out that the fda is going to approve something that you know is not 50% effective, is 10 or 20%. Can you give us some assurance that you would tell us the truth about the effectiveness of it, regardless of FDA approval? Thank you for the question. So um, we have a target product profile, um, which outlines the minimum characteristics and desired characteristics for, for um, the development of our product. And that includes assumptions on uh, minimum vaccine efficacy. If we saw 10% and we would design our trial actually to target the efficacy that's outlined in our target product profile, um, the study would fail if it hit 10%. Um, we would make those results available, but we would not feel comfortable bringing forward a product that did not, um, that was not found to be efficacious according to what we put forth in our protocol. Well, I appreciate that. Now, let me ask Dr. Hogue from Moderna. Can you briefly describe how how you would report any adverse events that might arise in your clinical trials uh, once it's available for use. I'm trying to get some answers on adverse events reporting, if you would. Sure, uh, so thank you for the question. Um, just like we've done recently in our New England Journal publication, um, any adverse events, we would publish completely that data. Uh, and we would expect to do that similarly for the phase three results, regardless of whether the trial is successful or not. It's important also to note, sir, that um, our vaccine study is being conducted in collaboration with the NIH, and they've actually set up an independent data safety and monitoring board that will be adjudicating and reviewing both the safety and efficacy of our study, which hopefully provides another level of confidence in the conclusions. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate your, your responses. 